Hey guys, Harman back for another review. So today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the brand new Ultimate T-800 from the Terminator 2 Judgment Day and this is made by NECA Toys. So uh, this just came out, you can find it at your local comic shop, uh, Toys R Us, FYE, any shops that are a specialty. Uh, you can also find it online. And uh, this is again that ultimate line that NECA has. Now of course you've seen a lot of Terminator 2 figures made by NECA over the years. Um, and if you're like me, if you miss those, you actually are going to be well taken care of here because this Ultimate T-800 is a lot of those same figures but kind of combined into one really nice collectible package. So let's get right into it. The front of the picture you can see is actual picture from the film and it looks like it's the picture where he's um, getting ready to face off against the police cars and of course no civilians were injured. So um, got a nice picture on the front it says T-800 Terminator 2 Judgment Day and then aside you see that same picture uh, a close-up of his face, neck of toys, uh, well, real toys right there. And then over to the back, you can see a nice uh, picture of him uh, in figure form. And actually, all those pictures are in figure form. And then you see a little bio of the uh, movie. And if you want to go ahead and pause that, you can. And, of course, there's some little pictures of each different uh, head sculpt and gun and then uh, basically the same type of image they use on the front but this time they use the actual figure so really really nice packaging so just like the other ultimate figures this has a nice little flap that opens up with a little velcro piece and again you get a nice clear picture of the figure uh, and again, it's very similar to the scene on the front, but this is in figure form. And then you can see the different uh, things it has to offer on the inside. You see the different interchangeable heads, multiple guns, and other accessories. So let's get right into uh, the figure here. All right, so here's Arnold out of the packaging, and he is fully loaded. Um, these are all the accessories, and just as he comes right out of the box. Um, and you can see the... Um, amount of accessories you're getting with these ultimate figures is well worth it. Um, you're going to get a few interchangeable heads and you're going to get uh, plenty of weapons. Alright, so the first head sculpt is just going to be that classic uh, no sunglasses Arnold uh, head sculpt and you can tell they've done a really good job with this. The uh, hair looks really nice, you can see the little different strokes and the way it's combed um, and it just has a really nice kind of like um, you know, kind of some shine and some spots, really good. Um, the Arnold head sculpt, as usual, is extremely well done. Um, I think they pretty much nailed his head sculpt at this point. And you can see nice um, details in the cheeks and in the chin area and even under the lip, forehead, some lines there, a little bit of like a brow. He never really smiles in the movie, except for maybe once or twice. Um, but yeah, he's a robot, so he's not going to smile too much. Um, now the head can be uh, fairly easily removed. You can just give it a twist, pops right off. And the cool thing is, is that you can actually pull this uh, ammo belt off, so you can display him without. You can display him without the ammo belt. And one of my favorite um, interchangeable heads is the sunglass head, so you can just easily put that on no struggle at all and man you could really see the details in that again it's pretty much the same head sculpt as the non sunglasses version it just has the glasses put on so it's very very similar um, but something about those sunglasses man that's just I could just see him riding that motorcycle now um, very very good head sculpt um, you can see there's like a nice shine on around the lenses, so it really makes it look like he's wearing sunglasses. Um, you can't really see too much like uh, behind the glasses, but that's okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah, extremely good head sculpt. And then again, you could just easily pop that right off. And the third and final head sculpt is probably most people's favorite, and that is the battle damage head sculpt. And this is, again, very well done. Now, the facial expression looks a little bit different. 
Uh, he doesn't have many expressions in it. Uh, but yeah, you can see there's a little bit of difference. Like if you look at his cheek, it's not quite as defined. And um, it's not quite the same as the uh, standard head sculpt. Eyes are a little bit different. And there's a little more detail, um, obviously, on the right side of his face. So into the damage, you can see there's like blood kind of on his neck here. And then you can see it's uh, scraped off skin showing the robot, uh, you know, head sculpt through here. And then it's nice to even get some blood on that other clean side, which is uh, a little more real realistic. And then look at that. You can actually see um, more through the back of his head, right through his hair. So very, very cool. Um, and if you also take notice of the back of his jacket, it has a ton of bullet holes in it. And even to the front, you can see the bullet holes. So this is like a semi-battle damaged uh, figure. It's not like he's a perfect, um, you know, like he just got out of the... Uh, like the beginning of the movie. It's not the beginning of the movie. It's pretty much reflecting this scene. So, very cool. And just looking over the details of the figure again. Uh, it's got a great head sculpt. Um, you can see, again, all the bullet holes on here. He's got some nice damage. Um, nothing really in the shirt area, but you can definitely see, like, uh, the six pack and just like the muscular uh, body coming through the shirt. Uh, it's some nice wrinkles in that shirt as well. See a belt in here, and he's got the classic uh, biker outfit. And then down to the lower portion of the figure, you know, you can see he's got um, those classic boots that he wears, just like the biker boots. And this is from the outfit that he steals from uh, one of the bikers in a bar at the very beginning of the movie. And then over to the back of the figure, you can see like those nice wrinkles in the pants. And then up into the jacket, again, you can see those uh, bullet holes kind of going through his back. And you can see a nice little soft belt on that leather jacket. So very, very nicely detailed. Love this jacket, man. So the biggest difference between this uh, T-800 Terminator figure and pretty much every other uh, Terminator figure ever made to date, um, at least in the 7-inch scale, is that this is actually fully articulated. And again, this is part of the ultimate uh, NECA line. So that's what you're going to get with this line. Um, so you have a full range of uh, head articulation. It's just on a ball joint, plenty of tilt action, um, a little bit of um, down, but plenty of looking up. So you're going to get great range of motion in that head sculpt. Um, you also get plenty of movement in the shoulder, the elbows, and the wrist. And then you also get uh, some turn in that um, waist. Not an ab crunch, just a turn. Uh, and then the biggest biggest difference is these uh, the legs. You can actually move the legs um, and get them kind of like in this uh, almost a kick. He doesn't really kick but you can move the leg pretty well. And of course the knee articulation is something we've never had with a uh, Arnold figure or at least Terminator figure. Uh, and there's also a swivel in the thigh and then a little bit of a swivel in the boot and you can actually uh, pivot a little bit too. Now one big difference too in these thighs is that his right one does not swivel, just his left leg. Um, and apparently on uh, Twitter, I know Randy actually said this could be for something down the line. So I'm thinking maybe a battle damage version. Um, who knows? But yeah, there's a reason that swivel was put in there. It was for something down the, down the line. But yeah, he's got plenty of articulation, so um, if you're really looking for a superior um, T-800 figure, this is definitely the best one. Now on to the weapons. First, you're going to start off with this handgun. Very nice detail on that. You can see his little break up in the um, 
coloring right here and here so it's got some pretty good details on here and then also see his most famous shotgun and this again would be great for a uh, like having him on a motorcycle and then I guess this is basically kind of a weapon but uh, it's his ammo belt like I said it's removable and it's got like a rubber um, strap and you can see uh, one of them is missing and then of course his grenade launcher and this has uh, got a nice little strap on it and of course this is made famous uh, at the end of the movie where he finally does in the T-1000 you can see it's got a nice brown handle and uh, some different pieces that are really nice and there's a lot of like little soft rubber pieces combined with like a um, little stronger rubber and plastic and then the final one you actually get this like uh, ammo belt with of course the Gatling gun connected to it. Um, now unfortunately when they sent this Gatling gun it was actually packed in with the ammo belt and it kinda got bent. Alright so Arnold's only gonna come with two uh, sets of hands um, just the regular hands that he actually comes with in the box. So you're not going to get any interchangeable hands, but he pretty much holds everything with no issue. Um, since they're all guns, he really just needs the uh, trigger uh, fingers. So just go ahead and here's the uh, handgun. And you can just give that a twist. Um, and one more. And you can see how he fits the handgun uh, clearly in his hand. He uses this for a brief time uh, in the movie when he's course shooting the T-1000. <laughs> um, and then the next weapon is my favorite which is the shotgun and he's gonna have his hand come through here so again um, you're still gonna put it in just like you did the handgun and then you just give it a little bit of a twist and make sure the fingers go in through that um, piece. Alright, so the final weapon for T-800 to hold is the Gatling gun. Now, uh, this is actually my most disappointing thing about this figure. Um, the way it was packed in the box gives this Gatling gun this curvy type of, um, you know, direction to the actual gun. So I really don't like how they packed it. Uh, I usually don't really complain much about the NECA stuff because it's so well done. But uh, yeah, this was a really, really bad packing design. So you can kind of like position him to where it looks a little bit better, um, but from the side it just looks like crap. So um, I would recommend using either a blow dryer or maybe even hot water to try to fix it. Um, I've already tried a couple methods just by bending it and that hasn't really kept it in place. So yeah, you definitely want to use some heat on this to uh, get it to work just right. All right, so let's do some comparisons. Here is the T-800 Terminator next to Dutch from the Predator. And of course, they're both Arnold and they're same scale. Um, now, the Dutch figure actually does feature a full range of articulation, including knee articulation, but he's not really considered an ultimate because he only has one head sculpt, and he really had a lot of different looks in that movie. Um, but yeah, they look great next to each other, so you can finally have these guys uh, face off in a really... Uh, well detailed and articulated uh, style. Alright, and here he is next to one of my absolute favorite Terminators, and this is from Terminator 1. Um, this is his younger version. So, yeah, really, really cool uh, figures. Um, now, you can actually interchange these uh, head sculpts and weapons. So, if you do have the older Terminator figures, you can kind of do a little bit of switching around with the uh, body parts. Now here he is next to the T-800 from the Robocop vs. Terminator video game and you can see that the way the gun is on the um, just the endoskeleton version it's actually much straighter so it was packed much better. It's not that um, the quality of the materials are wrong it's just the way it was packed so um, if you want you could use this Gatling gun um, but yeah the color scheme doesn't really go well with it like the um, one that's all silver does. So, um, you know, you can change that up if you want, but like I said before, I definitely recommend just putting it in some hot water or just using a uh, blow dryer. 
And here he is next to a T-800 from the uh, future war scene of uh, Terminator 2. So um, you can see he's a little bit taller than Arnold, which doesn't really make sense because Arnold is basically an endoskeleton underneath. Um, so yeah, the scale's not perfect, but uh, they still stand pretty cool next to each other. And just for one more scale comparison, you can see how the Terminator stacks up next to the Predator. And of course, Predator's in a 7-inch scale, but Predator, of course, would be like 8 foot tall. So, um, look awesome next to each other. This would be a real uh, crazy match. I think the Terminator would probably win. Um, but yeah, you can see he's still in that great 7-inch scale, so he'll look great next to any of your NECA figures. And you can also display Arnold on that Future War base. Since he has such great leg articulation, he fits just fine on there. And it uh, looks pretty cool, actually. So um, this base came, again, with that Future War T-800 Terminator. So unfortunately, I don't have the die-cast uh, Harley-Davidson. Um, but you can see that he would easily fit on a motorcycle. This is Arnold with the original um, Kenner heavy metal motorcycle, and this is actually from the Terminator 2 line, um, but his knees been perfect for him to be able to, uh, you know, sit on that motorcycle good. Um, now, I would highly recommend the Ertl or Maisto 110 scale um, Harley-Davidson Fat Boy. Um, I think they only have a 1999, but it looks just like it, so um, I think they do have a black paint scheme one, but it's very hard to find at this point. But yeah, I mean, if you have the old uh, heavy metal motorcycle, it's kind of nostalgic to have him sit on it. Um, but otherwise, at least you could see that he could sit on a uh, motorcycle. All right, so that's my review. Um, overall, I'm very happy with this figure. Uh, I've been coming very, very impressed with the uh, Ultimate line that NECA's released. This is just something that's uh, kind of long overdue, but... Um, I love it. I mean, I think it's great. They have all these different accessories, um, different head sculpts, and the box packaging is great in case you don't want to display them, or if you just have somewhere to finally keep the accessories as opposed to just kind of putting them in a drawer or something. So, um, really great packaging, and uh, just the details are great. Now, I didn't really buy any Terminator T2 uh, figures ever. Um, I bought some for gifts at one point, but I've never actually bought one for myself. I did have the uh, the Terminator 1 figure, and I have a couple endoskeletons, but yeah, I never bought the um, any T2 figures. So, um, you know, I kind of regretted that for a while, and then when they were, said they were going to do an ultimate version, it made me very happy. Um, just having that knee articulation alone would have warranted me buying it, um, because the legs were always in that static pose. And personally, I always wanted to put one on a motorcycle. So I'll definitely be getting uh, one of those Maisto motorcycles very soon. Um, you can pick this figure up at pretty much any specialty store, comic store. Uh, Toys R Us has them. And I ended up picking this up at a toy show. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching my review. Subscribe, like, um, leave a comment. And uh, until next time, guys. I will see you later.